Okay, let me start again. Sorry for the technical uh, uh, problem we had. So it's about lecture eight about um, decomposition techniques, optimization problems with decomposable structure. As I just uh, mentioned before the technical issue, here we are gonna talk about uh, how to know if our problem in hand is decomposable or not. So after that, we can talk about specific problems, specific techniques like Bender's decomposition or Lagrangian relaxation or ADMM or what. The first step is to know if our problem is decomposable or not. But from today till um, end of the course, we will focus on different uh, decomposition techniques, okay? Good. So the learning objectives of the lecture today is for you to, I mean, hopefully after this lecture, you will be able to explain why we need decomposition techniques at all and, and identify whether our problem is decomposable or not. And if it is, how we can decompose it, right? Based on the way we can decompose it later, we will pick a specific technique, either Bender's or Lagrangian uh, relaxation or any other technique. Good. Um, the main reference for uh, um, the decomposition uh, is, is, is this book in, in, in this course, but uh, over the lectures, I'll also provide uh, additional lectures, additional references, sorry. Well, what does it mean? What does um, uh, decomposition means? Decomposition is easy just to be able, to, if we have original optimization problem, with decomposable structure, by decomposition, we will be able to split the, the large, the, the big problem to a set of small decomposed problems, right? And obviously each decomposed problem is way easier to solve than the original non-decomposed problem, right? So it's like a very large piece of ice we can't handle it, so we split it to smaller pieces of ice, and then we can easily uh, carry, uh, carry it. So the, the idea of decomposition is to split a large scale problem to a set of small problems to, I mean, decomposed optimization problems, okay? So why do we need decomposition in energy systems? So we can think of two different types of problems, right? The short run or mid run problems, or you can call it operational problems like market clearing, unit commitment, something like that. Also, we have long run problems like uh, planning problems, investment problems. So in operational problems, why do you think we need uh, to use the composition techniques? I'm not saying everywhere, but is there any case that we need the composition implemented to operational problems? Any idea? Why do we need to use the composition techniques for operational problems in power and energy systems? Any clue? You can write in the chat box. Uh, neuron set problems are in general large scale. Uh, large MILP scale, stochastic models, time restrictions. Exactly, very good. Computational burden, large scale problem. Thank you so much for uh, very good inputs. That's the point exactly. So in operational problems, we need to solve our problem in a specific time period. If you are solving, let's say um, a day ahead, electricity market clearing problem, we have to solve it, I don't know, in max one hour or half an hour. It depends on the regulation of the underlying market. We cannot wait for a day to see if our market clearing problem in day is being solved or not. So we have time restrictions. And of course, it's something similar. We need to have our, I mean, to make sure our problem is computationally tractable, right? But what about the planning problems, the investment problems, right? In investment problems, we don't have time restrictions. We are making decisions for the next 20 years. 
I mean, if if our problem, uh, if we solve it in 10 days, even if the computational time takes, takes 10 days, it's fine. It's, it's no, no big deal. I mean, we don't need the results right away. So is there any reason that we need to use the composition techniques for planning problems? The answer is still yes, because the planning problems can be easily computationally intractable. My, my PhD thesis was about planning and investment in energy systems. You can easily build a model which is computationally intractable. You start uh, running your code and it takes forever to get the results. I mean, even if you leave it for 10 days, 100 days, you will not see any solution. So, so this problem is computationally intractable and we need the composition techniques to solve it in a, in a tractable way, right? Yeah, Brian, for example, said multi-stage stochastic planning. Yes, is, exactly. If you go for a large number of scenarios, it's really easy that, to see that, yeah, your, your, your problem becomes uh, computationally intractable. In, in my thesis, PhD thesis there, I, I had for example, an example that even using the composition with uh, a moderate number of scenarios, even it took uh, like a day to solve the problem. Good, so I hope it's clear from computational wise, why we need the composition techniques. Is it clear? Good. Nice to see that, well, um, we have some computational advantages if we use a decomposition, but is there any side benefit um, of, I mean, side benefit of decomposition techniques? Is there something else, some, any other benefit rather than computational benefits? Peter says transparency. Uh, I don't know what you mean by transparency. Abel Faz says security of information. Yeah, also I got a few uh, comments, privacy. Maybe one of you, sorry, one of you can, uh, can unmute and explain what you mean by privacy or security of information. All of our um, approaches up until now have relied on us sharing our optimization problem and not everyone's going to want to do that. Exactly, exactly. When you solve a large scale problem, Implicitly, we assume that, for example, in the market problem or whatever, everyone shares uh, the information with the central optimizer and the central optimizer solves the problem for everyone. This means that we are sharing our information. Among them, we might have some sensitive information, right? So if we might be, I mean, if, if we manage to solve our problems ourselves and just communicate with let's say a central optimizer, just some information, not all the information, internal uh, information, then it means that this enhances our privacy, right? This preserves uh, uh, data dignity, if you like to say it, yeah. Is it clear then how distributed optimization or decomposition I mean, it's good from privacy perspective too. Is it clear? Yes. But later, not today, I will argue that distributed optimization as it is, it doesn't necessarily guarantee privacy uh, uh, preservation. It doesn't mean that uh, we, we guarantee our data privacy. Later, I'll talk about that, it's too soon. Just, I'm trying to say that, I like to put a question mark there saying that, let's check later, really, really uh, decomposition and distributed optimization preserves privacy or not. We will talk about it later, not today. Okay, clear? Hope it is. Good. Um, in general, we have two types of decomposable problems, not more than that. Either decomposable problems with complicating variables or with complicating constraints, right? Um, 
some other references, instead of saying complicating, they use a uh, word coupling or linking. So they are the same things, linking constraints, linking variables, or coupling constraints, coupling variables. Okay, let's start with the first one, problems with complicating variables. Any clue what it is? If you say in a problem we have complicating or linking or coupling variable, what does it mean? Uh, no, it's not about intertemporal or binary. I almost said complicating variables are shared among subproblems. Okay, let's not talk about subproblems. You have a big, large scale problems and you say, well, variable X is complicating or coupling variable. How do you know that? before driving the subproblems. So complicating variable is a variable that, yeah, Carolina, I, I, I like your answer. Carolina said it's a variable that has impact on several constraints. Yes, complicating variable is a variable that if we fix it, and if we treat it as a parameter, then our original problem will be decomposed to a, a, a set of subproblems. So it's like a glue. We have a lot of subproblems. Just because of complicating variable, we need to solve all subproblems together. If we fix it, then all subproblems will be separated. Okay? So it's, it's a variable that, as you said, links also problems, uh, it's like a glue. If we fix it, then the problem will be decomposed. So similarly, what about uh, complicating constraint? What, what, what is it? How to know that a constraint is complicating or linking? Yes, Lisandro says a constraint that links the variables, okay? Should I, what should I do with that constraint to see that if it's decomposable or not? Yes, Brian said, if we relax the complicating constraint, also Kelly said, then uh, the original problem will be decomposed. Yes, so if complicating variable, if we fix it, or if we relax the complicating constraint, then our original problem will be decomposed. That's the definition, but we will see how to identify it. Yeah, as I said, uh, different literature, they also called it coupling or, or linking. So first of all, you have to know any distributed optimization technique or decomposition technique, all of them, they are iterative solution techniques, right? And you can imagine why, because either we are fixing complicating variable or relaxing complicating constraint. So over iterations, uh, we are trying to uh, restore the complicating constraint that we relaxed or achieve the optimal value of the complicating variable we fixed. So it's kind of natural that these solutions are iterative. And in all optimization problems, we will end up to a set of subproblems after fixing complicating variable or relaxing complicating constraint. And we will get a master problem. This master problem could be an optimization problem, like in the case of Bender's decomposition, you will see, or it could be just an um, updating, not optimization problem, some, some equations, okay? Is it clear so far, these definitions? Yes, good. Let's go for um, optimization problem with complicating constraints, this case. Here we have a simple linear program, LP. It's the original problem. We have um, eight variables. And just to make the life easier, 
I put uh, variables in color, either blue or red or green. So please check it out for, for a minute and see if there's any complicating constraint that if we, meaning that if you relax that constraint, remove that constraint, then the original problem will be decomposed. So we have two correct answers by John and Ahmad, but is it clear to everyone? why the last one is the complicating constraint. Yes, a lot of yes. Um, yes, Ahmed, would you like to say why? The last constraint is coupling constraint, complicating constraint. Uh, yes, because it uh, links all the, the three other constraints uh, in this problem. Uh, it's, yeah, it's it's the constraint with the with all variables, right? That's correct. Yes. So so Ahmed, if we relax it as a complicating constraint, if we relax it, if we remove this constraint, then what happens? Then you can have uh, three different problems. Okay. What is the first one? So you'll have uh, minimize. Uh, the uh, the problem with the variables of the blue variables. Yes. So this is the, the first problem. Yeah. You agree? That's correct. That will be the first problem. And yes. Then you'll have uh, the second problem would be the one with the red variables or the y variables. Exactly. And the third problem. Yeah. So on. And then the it's the one. last yeah. one. Right. So we have three sub problems. All of them they are minimizing. Uh, the three sub problems, uh, and which is good. Uh, this only includes variables x. This sub problem only includes variables y, and the last one only includes variables z. If and if we remove the last constraint, because it was the constraint that linking all variables x, y, z together. So it's clear that why this is complicating constraint. So I don't have a formula to you that you can use it and see if your problem is decomposable or not. It's kind of a skill and expertise that you will get over the time, right? And this is what we are trying to get this, this lecture. So we talked about that. So if we fix the last constraint, we will get three sub, three sub uh, problems. This is our first subproblem, second subproblem, and third subproblem. And we can solve them separately, but over iterations. Good. If you write your um, feasible space, uh, your constraints in form of matrix A times variables, vector of variables equal to vector of constraints like this, and in a decomposable uh, problem with complicating constraint, you will see that you have a sparse matrix, but there is at least one line, which are all, I mean, they have non-zero variables. And it could be a sign that, oh, okay, you have a complicating constraint. Is it clear? Uh, it's not necessarily equality, it could be also lower than or equal to. Good. Let's now talk about this. Again, it's an LP problem and all variables, they are in color. Um, the, the notation in black, they are parameters. Do we have a complicating variable here? Jemima says beta. Is there anyone who confirms Jemima's answer? Eric, Eric, Peter, yeah. Carolina, Ingrid, Amos, all they are saying yes. For others, is it clear or not yet? Yes. Jemima, would you like to unmute and say why beta is a um, uh, complicating variable? Um, because it's in all of the constraints. So, 
if you fix it, then it would affect, it, it would completely separate all those constraints. Very good. So Jemima uh, suggests to fix beta. So now we go for beta fixed, exactly. So now this is fixed, this is fixed, this is fixed, this is fixed, and both of them, they are fixed. Then what happens, Jemima, if we fix them? Um, then there would be nothing linking all of those constraints and you can divide it up into three sub-problems again. Three sub-problems. What is the first one? Uh, the first one is the first two constraints with the blue variables and the first two in the objective function. Very good. And what is the second? The second two in the objective function and the third constraint. Yes. So this is the first one? Yep. This is the second one. Very good. And what is the last one? Uh, the one with the with green. green Zs. Yeah. Very good. What about this, Jemima? Um, I think that's just a parameter now, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. D is parameter. Beta is parameter. So we can uh, remove it from the objective function. Very good. Very good. Thank you, Jemima. So beta is a complicating variable. And if we fix it, we will have three subproblems. So one complicating variable, three subproblems. But it doesn't mean that always you have only one complicating variable or necessarily one complicating kind. You might have more than one complicating variable or constraint. Again, if we write our um, problem, feasible space, um, in, in terms of, uh, as I said, in a matrix and vector form, this time you will see that this time there is a, a column in your matrix, coefficient matrix, that um, they, they take non-zero values, while for the rest, it's kind of a sparse matrix. So it's a sign that you have a complicating variable. Lars said is beta is complicating variable. It's a complicating variable. Beta is a variable for original problem. We fix it intentionally to decompose the problem, but over the iterations, using the decomposition techniques that I will teach, we will end up to optimal beta over the iterations. But the for original problem, beta is a variable. We fix it. Is it clear, Lars? Yes, now uh, the fun part. So here in this link, uh, I will, uh, yes, uh, I, I, I will um, share it in the chat box. There are six examples. Uh, I, the answers are in the rest of the slides. So I suggest not to go, not to check the rest of the slides. So go to this link. Uh, for 15 minutes, for 15 minutes, each of you check the six examples and explore if they are decomposable or not. So that's the first item. Each example, is it decomposable or not? If so, how? By complicating variable or uh, complicating constraint. Uh, I, will, I, I will put, I mean, Instead of clicking, just you need to copy and paste the whole link. I guess it will work. If not, I will share the link in the chat box very soon. Good. So first you need to check how your problem, each example is decomposable. Then if it's decomposable, that's what I need from you to hear. Number of complicating variables or constraints and number of subproblems that you achieve. And please note that in some of the examples, you may have more than one option. For example, you may be able to just relax one constraint or two constraints or three constraints. So I, I, I like that you think a bit thoroughly about all potential options. And for each option, again, you can think of the number of complicating variables or constraint and the number of resulting subproblems. So for 15 minutes, yeah, that's what we can do. It's now, it's uh, 
440. So till 455, you can think. Then we can have a break of 10 minutes. Then uh, at 505, we will start again, but with breakout sessions. In the breakout sessions, you will check your answers with your peers. Okay. Uh, let me just uh, copy and paste. Yeah, I, I, I will do. I will do when I uh, hold recording. Uh, or someone else also can. Maybe also someone else can. Can yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Many people they they put the link there. Uh, good. So at 5.05, .05, we will start again. Then uh, we will go for breakout sessions for 10 minutes or 15 minutes. You will check your solutions with your group mates. Then we will solve all problems together. Okay. Good. So see you at five past five. By that time for 15 minutes, check the examples, 10 minutes break. So 5.05, we will start the game. Thank you, see you. Well, uh, welcome back. Hope uh, you had good discussions in your groups about uh, each example, how it's uh, decomposable. Um, well, uh, we, can, we can go examples one by one all together and see what your answers are. So example one, uh, is there anyone who would like to unmute and, uh, and uh, share her or his opinion? Do we have any complicating variable or constraint here? Any idea? So uh, it's a basic example and uh, yes, I it's hope. Yeah. Yes, it's x, x6, the complicated uh, variables. So if we fix it, mm -hmm. we can uh, divide the, our problem into three sub problem. Uh, the first one is x1 and x2. x1 and x2, yes. And so the three sub, three uh, first uh, constraints. So it would be uh, with x1 and x2, you are saying, right? So it's. Yes. This one, okay. Yes. Uh, the second uh, sub-program with uh, just x3. Let me see, then x3 only. So it will be this constraint? Yes. This this problem, okay, and then? And then uh, the last one with x4 and x5, and uh, x6 is, uh, is um, fixed, so. Yes, so it will be the last okay. one, it will three be this one. Yes. Sorry, this one. And three sub problems. And the last one is, I mean, this is just constant. So it can be eliminated. It's constant. Mm -hmm. So how many yes. how many complicating variables? Uh, one. Yes, it's one. And how many sub problems? It's three. Yes. Very good. Thank you, Arno. It's totally correct. So good, so X3 is complicating variable and we will end up in uh, three sub problems. Very nice. Okay, example number two. Uh, is there anyone who would like to explain? A volunteer? So don't please be shy. I, mean, I, I don't know about yeah. explain, but uh, yeah. um, we have three generators. Um, we can split the problem into those three, but we have one complicating constraint. Yes. Um, the last one. I, I'm not going to pretend to know what to do with that constraint, but it makes things complicated. Okay. If we eliminate this, what happens? How many sub problems we will have? Then it's easy. Three sub problems um, yes. G1, G2, G3. So the first sub problem is minimizing right? 10 G1, right? The only variable is G1. And then the constraint is G1 is between zero and 100, right? Mm -hmm. Second and third, they are similar. So the second was generator two. 
uh, 25 G2 and G2 is between zero and 150. And the third one is minimize over G3, third G3 subject to G3 is between zero and 200, right? So the number of complicating constraint is equal to one. Number of subproblems is equal to three. Thank you. Thank you, Sebastian. Good. So uh, this is the complicating constraint. If we remove it, relax it, we will have three subproblems, one per generator. Good. Um, does it remind you the equilibrium problem, this problem, if we relax it? I mean, here we have kind of, you know, three optimization problem. Each individual solves her own problem while we relaxed the price setter problem. Am I right? Yes. John asked uh, Jada regarding the complicating constraint after rela relaxing it, don't you take it into account anymore? Uh, John, so far, uh, we are just identifying complicating constraint, but I, uh, I promise uh, in, in a decomposition techniques we will learn, we will take into account back over iterations. So, so far here, we are here just to identify which constraint is complicated or which variable is fixed. But in, in the techniques we will, we will talk about in the next lecture, we will of course take on that kind of, otherwise, well, it's not the right solution. Very good. Uh, here, example three, do we have any answer here? Yeah, uh, I can. Yes. Uh, I think it's similar to the previous one. I yeah, Mauricio, yes. Constraint is complicated. Which one? The last one. Yes, this is the complicating constraint. Yes. And how many subproblems? Um, we will have four. Yes. So we have complicating constraint is only one, the power balance equality, and the number of subproblems is four, means one per agent, right? Yeah. One per agent or one per individual. Good. So yes, it's, is it clear for everyone? We don't need to write the force of problems, right? It's clear, it's like the previous one. Very good. So one per agent. So now we have uh, multiple hours, multiple hours. So what about this? Do we have any complicating variable or constraint? Maybe one of you can unmute. Um, so yeah. it's, basically the same as the last ones. We have a, a coupling or um, a complicating constraint um, in the equilibrium, also in the uh, balance constraint in the last one. Yes. Um, the difference is that we have here a summation over, uh, over uh, yeah, the hours, but um, it, 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 they are not uh, linked together in the constraints. So I agree. Uh, it's, uh, it's uh, already decoupled uh, for, yes. for, for the time. I, I agree, yes. Okay, but if you assume, okay, we, if we don't count it, that the times they are from the first place, they are um, decoupled. Okay, so how many coupling constraints do we have in this example? The number of complicating constraints? Uh, it's uh, it's for, for every hour we have one coupling constraint. Or so one per constraint. hour. So we have each number of complicating constraints, right? Yes. Very good. How many uh, subproblems we will have? Um, that is um, the number of hours um, times the agents. Exactly. So here it's four times H, four times the number of hours. Is it clear? So for example, for, for the demand, it will be maximize or G 
sorry, not G, D, D, H1, it will be maximized, sorry, 40 D, H1, subject to D, H1 is between zero and D, H1, this one per hour. One per hour. So that's the, the first H number of sub problems. Good. So we have H number of complicating constraint and four times H number of sub problems. Very good. Yes. Okay, now one of the generators, um, they have ramping up and down constraints. What about this? What do you think here? Do we have complicated, is it composable? Maybe one of you can unmute and explain. Hi, I can try. Yes, Carolina. I had some doubts regarding it, but uh, yes. I believe we can have, uh, uh, we have a H uh, complicating constraint, which would be the power balance. This one? The last one, yes. Yes, so then the number of complicating constraints? Would be H. Wait, the the yes. number of hours? Exactly, the number of hours. What about the number of subproblems? Then we would have one subproblem for generator one because it has the time coupling. Yes. So you would count all the hours. Yes. And then we have uh, one subproblem per hour for generator two, for generator three, and for demand one. Exactly. So it will be how many? So it's three times H plus one. Exactly. So if you write these sub problems, so for generator one, which is a bit complicated, what it, I mean, can you help me to write the- Yes, uh, then, if uh, you yeah? will maximize the minus 10 generator one, GH1. Yes, minus 10 GH1. Okay. And you have to sum over H. Exactly. And constraint? Uh, subject to the bounds constraints of generator one per hour. Exactly. And? And the time coupling per hour as well. The bounds the, constraint for time coupling. The ramping. The ramping constraints, that one. Exactly. Exactly. So this is the uh, sub problem for G1. Let me erase this part. What about the G2 as an example? You would maximize uh, the generation two. Yes, minus But you don't, sum, don't, don't need to sum at this point. Yes, because we don't have ramping, sorry, in the, in the temporal constraints. So the only variable is GH2, exactly, and constraint and subject to the bounds of the generation. Exactly, it's between zero and 150. And we can have this problem one per hour. Yes, very Great. good, very good. Thank you, Carolina, very You're good. Welcome. Any questions so far? Uh, Ingrid said she didn't get uh, the number of sub problems because we have four uh, agents but one of the agents has intertemporal constraints, so we cannot decompose the corresponding problem per hour, right? For three generators, we can decompose per hour, but for one generator, we have only one problem in all. Yannick said, is it possible to decompose the GH1 problem again? Okay, Yannick, I, I, I would reward your question like this, do we have any other option? Shall we have only the last constraint as, as a complicating constraint? Do we have any other option? So let's do one thing more this time. 
as option two. So what we explain, what Carolina explained, let's call it option one, right? So in option one, we saw that we, we are, uh, the number of complicating constraint was H and the number of subproblems was three H plus one. Let's call it option one. Let's see what, if, if we have something else or not. Yes, Sahan said, can't we relax all the intertemporal constraint? Uh, so Sahan, could you please unmute and say, this time if we relax only the ramping constraint, what happens? Well, if we relax the, all the ramping constraints for every hour, uh -huh. we would have, uh, I think, if we don't relax the, we sh should we relax the last constraint? Can we relax? Go we can do it, but I'll call it option three. Let's go for option two. Just so if, relaxing this one. Right, so we would have a edge complicating constraint. Yes, but also we have ramping up and ramping down, right? Right, so two times H. Yeah, we have two times H complicating constraint, but if you relax it, what will happen? How many sub problems we will get? We would have a sub problem per hour. So we would have, I think, H sub problems. Yes, sub problem, the number of sub problems, problems is just number of hours. Why not four H, why just H? Is because there's, the, yeah. yeah, because the last constraint relate all the generation and demand to each other. Exactly. So by relaxing the intertemporal constraints, we get uh, hours decoupled, but it's still the last constraint couples the agents. So the number of sub problems will be just H. Very good. So I added here option two, two H number of complicating constraints and just H number of sub problems. So, so far, if we comp uh, compare options one and two, do we have any clear Wiener option? So let me write it a bit better. So in the second option is two number of H is number of complicating constraints, but the number of sub problems is H. Uh, Hosna goes for the first option. Jemima says one creates smaller problems. So in general, do we prefer to have more number of sub problems or less? Do we prefer to have less number of sub problems? Remember what's the goal of the compositions? The original problem has computational issues. We like to solve it. In general, we, one may say that we prefer to have more number of sub problems and less number of complicating constraints because as long as you relax more complicating constraints over the iterations, you need to restore them. So it may need more iterations. So Lars says in case two, isn't complicating constraints two minus two H minus two, uh, you're right. But also Lars, in the first hour, we have a similar constraint, let's say for initial hour. So, so we put for all H, not H, I mean, starting from hour two. So I would say still it's, it's um, two times number of hours. So um, is it clear, I mean, it, it looks like that the first option is better because with less number of constraints to be relaxed, we end up in more number of sub problems. And each number of sub problems is smaller than the scale of the sub problem in option two. Is it clear? But I mean, you would never take a simple LP with time cutting constraints and decompose that. That yeah. would offer no benefits. Yeah, that's true. I mean, for simple LP, even it doesn't make sense to go for decomposition, right? So I think here, as you said, the complicating variables take much longer to solve than just leaving the temporal problem. Uh, what did I say, sorry? 
if you if you take generator H1 um, with its temporal coupling constraints and you just solve that problem, that's a simple simplex solution that runs very quickly. But if you decompose that problem, you don't know how long it's going to take. It'll definitely be longer than the yes, simplex. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, what I'm saying is that in general, it's not really easy to say which option is better because it depends on size of subproblems. For example, here, the size of one subproblem might be way bigger than the others. So it may take uh, the problem, make the problem smaller to be solved. In general, it's not a, how to say, a rigorous criterion, but in general, we prefer to have less number of complicating constraints, more number of subproblems. As, 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 as long as we decompose the original problem to more number of subproblems, it might be better. Okay, do you agree? Kelly say, if we assume that subproblems are solved by different entities, is it still preferable having more subproblems? Well, no, if we talk about privacy issues, then it might be different. So here, if we decompose one per agent, privacy wise is much better because each agent solves her own problem. While if we decompose per hour, still the agents need to share information with the central planner, central optimizer. So I'm not here to discuss which option is better or not. It depends on the application. It's really case specific, but just uh, I like to highlight that you have to think about different options that you may have in a single problem, okay? Just think thoroughly, maybe you have more than one option for decomposing the problem. But case by case, it might be different which option is better. But think of all options. That's all my uh, message here. Good, let's go for option three. I think it's obvious, right? Let's see what happens if we relax those constraints. It could be an option also, right? So maybe one of you can unmute and tell me what happens, what will happen if we relax the last two constraints? How many subproblems we, sorry, how many complicating constraints and how many subproblems we will get? Any volunteer? How many complicating constraints we get? It's 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 obvious, right? Zero. Uh, how, how many more is you? How, if, if you relax those two? Yeah, we relax these two constraints. So we don't have them anymore. How many constraints we are relaxing? Three. Yeah. Three times H, right? One constraint per hour, two constraints per hour in the ramping. But how many subproblems do we get? Yes. Chandra and Sahan, they are saying four times H. Why Chandra? Because every R is decoupled and all the players are decoupled. Yes, now we have one subproblem per hour per agent. So it's four times H. Good. Again, I'm not saying which option is winning, just when you think of decomposing a problem, think of all your potential options. Okay, is it clear? Shall we go example six? If you say clear, I'll be happy, then I can you know, confidently go. Yes, can I speak? Yes, John, go, please. Uh, hi, sorry. Uh, in the, uh, I think it was option two, <clears throat> that you just removed the the balance constraint. Balance in, constraint or ramping? Uh, remove the balance constraint. Let me let sure. me remove it. Yeah. The balance constraint. Yes, I remove this one. So now this is removed. Okay. In that case, uh, wouldn't it be possible to just create sets of two hours in order to create more two problems? Could you please explain again? Sorry, I didn't get. Uh, like, uh, okay, the the ramping constraint uh, relates to uh, the variables, gh and gh minus one. Uh, 
Yes. So can't you create problems with just those two hours? No, it's not just two hours. It links hour one to two, then hour two to three, then hour three to four. All hours are connected. It's not just two hours. Yeah, but can't you create, I mean, a maximization problem of GH1 and GH2, then GH2 but, and GH2. But then also two appeared here. Yeah, that's it. So, ah, okay, okay, but yeah. It's not surprising. Okay. So you cannot have a variable of two here and then also in other sub problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You have to. I don't think it will work out. Do you agree? Yeah, totally. Thank you. Okay. Good, good, good. Any other questions so far? Very good. So, yes, we have, we talked about it. So, example six. Example six, do we have any complicating variable or complicating constraint here? Any, any answer? I'm gonna say the same complicating constraint we had before, um, the balancing constraint. Okay, let's go with Sebastian's idea. Okay, so which one is the complicating constraint, the last one? Or the so balance. The last one, the balancing constraints. So we have those. So let's say this is complicating constraints. How many complicating constraints do we have? H. Thank you. So how many sub problems? So in this case, I would form three sub problems: G1, G2, G3, and X3 is a part of the problem G3. So how many? Three. Let's see. I, 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 I'm not sure. We could, we could temporarily decouple those as yes. well, except X3 is a temporarily coupling constraint Very if good. you want to look at it that way. So then we, we like well, to decompose as much as we can. If you want to decompose that way, then X3 um, is greater than zero. Well, X3 is greater than zero is itself a, a, a um, that's fine, but X3 becomes a coupling constraint. Uh, okay, let's write X3 some needs to be the same across all sub problems. Okay, let's write the problems one by one. Okay, let's go for, first go for generator three. So what is the generator three subproblem here in this case? It's minimize, it's investment problem, right? Capacity expansion. Yeah, problem. it's 15,000 X3 plus the sum of 30 GH3 over H. Very good. So H 30 GH3 subject to. X3. Subject to H3 is between zero and X3. Yes. And X3 is greater than zero. Uh, exactly, X3. And our variables are X3 and GH3. So this is only one subproblem, right? Just one subproblem. Uh, sub what about for others? Let's say for generator one. Generator one is, is very easy. That's yes. basically That's of the same form. It just doesn't have the variable X. Exactly. So. It's minimized 10 GH1 subject to GH1 between zero and 100. Shall I go for sum over H or not? We like to decompose as much as we can. I mean, one could, um, as I've said before, I, I don't see the point, I would never do it, but it is possible theoretically, yes. Yeah, theoretically, we would like to go here in this case, as much as if you want, it is entirely that. possible to decompose it. Yes. Yes, exactly. We like and the to... same thing for G three. Okay. Uh, sorry for for for, for G two. Sorry. Um, exactly. So the number of sub problems, how many will it be now in this case? Two uh, H plus one. Exactly. Two H plus one. Two H plus one. Very good. So here I'm writing option one. So the number of complicating constraint is H. Number of subproblems, if we go, is 2h plus 1. Is it clear uh, for everyone? This option? If you say yes, I'll be happy. Good. OK. Um, in the chat box, uh, I saw uh, another suggestion, too. What is that? Maybe one can unmute. What was the other option? 
Can we decompose this problem in any other way? I saw the solution, the answer. Yes, I saw Nikos and Mauricio, the answer. Also Kelly, maybe um, Nikos, would you like to unmute? Hello. Yeah, hello. So, so the investment variable X3 is a complicating variable. Very good. So how many complicating variable do we have? It's actually one. Very good. And why is it complicating variable? Because it bounds the investment problem and the operational problem. Okay. This and is. if we fix it, uh, how many sub problems we will get? We can have eight sub problems, one for each hour. Very good. Exactly. Exactly. Because still we have this. So um, if we fix X, very good. What will be the sub problem for generator one? Can you help me to write? It will be minimize so, what? Uh, minimize uh, G H, uh, 30 G H3. Exactly, because now this term is fixed, right? We can remove it from the objective function. So it will be minimized over G H3, 30 G H3, exactly. Uh, actually, I, I said wrong, sorry. Uh, now we are decomposing per hour, right? Yeah. Because, because we, we cannot decompose per agent, still we have the power balance constraint. So we have sub problems, one per hour. What is each sub problem? Minimize. 10 GH1. Yes, 10 GH1 plus 25 Five GH2 seven. plus 30 GH3. Good. Uh, the variables are all the Gs, G1, G2, G3, subject to? Uh, the constraints for G1 and G2. Exactly, uh, let, let me fully write. G H1 is between zero and 100. G H2 is between zero and 150. What is then? The G H3 is between zero and what? X3, but now X3 is fixed. Yes, exactly. And this constraint can be removed because now we fixed it, but we fixed it to in, in a positive, in a non-negative value. Mm -hmm. Very good. So we have one sub problem per hour. And also the, the balance. Oh, yes. Thank you. So GH1 plus GH2 plus GH3 is equal to demand. So here in option two, the number of complicating variables is one, while the number of sub problems is one per hour. If you think uh, for generation uh, expansion planning problem, we consider many, many hours, all hours, I don't know, in 10 years. So it's a really good option because um, if, if you have, I don't know, 10,000 hours, we, we, are, we are decomposing the problem by fixing just one variable to in, in uh, 10,000 problems, right? And uh, it's, it's really nice. Um, yeah, always in all investment problems or capacity expansion problems, the investment variable is a very good candidate to be uh, fixed and then to be used, and then we can use the composition techniques. Kelly said we have the third option. I'm not sure. What is what is the third option, Kelly, you think of? If we relax both, sorry, I, I'm just speaking. Yeah. If we uh, if we consider X3 as the complicating constraint and the power balance uh, as, okay. sorry, X3 as the complicating variable and the power balance constraints as the complicating constraints. So combining the previous two. I see. Um, the problem is that for complicating variables, we will use a specific technique like Bender's decomposition. For complicating constraints, we will use another technique based on Lagrangian relaxation. So either we will use, uh, we will decompose either using complicating constraints or complicating variables. We will not mix them out, right? So, so that is not our option to simultaneously fix a variable and relax a constraint. We are, we are not gonna do that because each one has its own technique. Is it clear? 
Okay. So I hope it's everything clear now. So we had two options here. Now let's talk about exercises. Yannick said, what happens when a variable has no term in the objective function, but is it still put a separate problem? It's, it's totally fine. Um, to, to have um, a complicating variable, we don't necessarily have that variable in the objective function. If we have a variable that is still not appeared in objective function, but it still links to problem, it still could, it could be um, a, a complicating variable for us. But then in the resulting uh, subproblem, you use an auxiliary objective function. Or how does it work? No, no, no. You, you have to give an example to see how it is. But when you fix um, uh, a complicating variable, it doesn't mean that uh, just that variable will, will appear in, in one object, one subproblem. Uh, but, but maybe, I mean, if, if we have an example, we can say better, but well, I, I, consider the example before. And if, if the H would be like in, uh, if the H would be a variable, but it just gives no utility. Uh, what is variable? Sorry, H? DH, yeah. DH. DH, oh, okay. Yeah, if it's variable. Yeah, exactly. But it doesn't have any utility in the objective function. Like, yeah, but but it's not a complicating variable. If it's no, if it's a constraint, if you have a complicating constraint. Okay, so what's the question? If we remove it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, uh, if, so if I if I have another constraint for the H, then, and I would put it into a separate problem. Okay, yeah. Like again, maybe we can talk about it offline okay. if you come yeah. up with a, a rigorous example. Okay. Uh, it's, 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 it's hard. <laughs> All to right, see. thank you. But generally, I don't think we need auxiliary uh, term in the object function or whatever. Uh, okay, that's our example one, exercise one for uh, next exercise meeting on Monday. Uh, this is our last example, uh, capacity expansion uh, planning problem. So what we need, so we realize that X3 is our complicating variable. Right? So here, this exercise asks you to drive the dual optimization problem and see if it's still decomposable or not. So you need to drive the, uh, the, um, the dual problem of this and see if it's decomposable or not. But before doing that, because you have to think of that, do you have any um, guess from now whether the dual problem will be decomposable or not? Sebastian says, and Kelly both, they, they agree. They say they will be. And Peter also. Peter, would you like to say you unmute why it will be, you think? Well, not really, but uh, now you ask. Uh, I just guess, you know, the, since the jewel is, uh, we've seen from so many angles that it's the same problem. So why shouldn't it be decomposable? That's just my, you know, definitely do some math, uh, math argument as well. Good. Uh, here, x3 is complicating variable. What do you think will happen in the in the dual problem? Uh, Kelly said, but if primal has complicating variable, dual will have complicating constraint. Kelly, would you like to elaborate a bit? Uh, yeah, I was just thinking because uh, we know that the number of variables that the primal, uh, primal problem has is equal to the number of constraints. So um, yeah. This is how I thought, but perhaps this is how it's related. Uh, yeah. That's 100% that's correct, yes. Uh, please drive the dual problem. You, you will get uh, a better feeling and understanding why this happens. But yes, that's correct. If a primal problem has complicating variable, then the dual will have complicating constraint and vice versa. So for complicating variables later, we will use Bender as the composition. For complicating constraints, we will use Lagrangian relaxation. Well, if you prefer one method over the others, for example, you like Lagrangian relaxation but not Bender as much, that's fine. If you have a complicating variable, you insist to not use Bender's, no problem. Take the dual problem. Now you will have a decomposable problem with complicating constraints. 
then you can use Lagrangian relaxation. Is it clear? Good. Exercise number two. Exercise number two. Uh, Sebastian confirmed that that's very cool. I also think it's very cool. <laughs> uh, this is a two-stage stochastic programming problem, right? Two-stage uh, scenario-based stochastic programming problem. It's like our stochastic uh, market clearing problem. Uh, we have um, a day ahead cost based on, let's say we don't have, uh, yeah, I didn't put wind. Let's say um, it's, I mean, the uncertainty comes from demand, for example. So uh, in the day ahead, we have only um, the day ahead dispatch of generators. And then we have real time, expected real time cost, the operational cost of the system in real time for each scenario, all in expectation. And we have two variables, the real time adjustment of generators and load shedding. Then we have three types of constraints. The first one is just depends on day ahead variables. The second one only depends on real time variables because they are indexed by omega. While the last constraint, they are linking constraint. We have day ahead variables, or you can call it in general, first stage variables. And also we have second stage variables all indexed by omega. So again, you need to think of it till Monday, but do you have any initial clue? If uh, two-stage stochastic problem, is it decomposable or not? Any first clue? Uh, Sahan says they had generation variables should be fixed. Sahan, would you like to elaborate a bit? Uh, yes, sure. Uh, well, as you said in the problem, uh, you prefer that we have a sub problem for each scenario. So if we fix the day ahead generation for, uh, for each hour and each uh, generator, we would have... Let's say uh, we don't have hour, it's just G. So we, we fix yeah. day ahead to fixed. Okay, then what happens? We would have uh, omega uh, sub problems. Yes, here we will, it will be removed. Then this will be removed. This is fixed. Then we will have how many sub problems you said? Uh, number of scenarios, I number think. Number of scenarios, exactly. So that you will see how we can use uh, vendors decomposition for uh, yeah, solving two stage stochastic program. Um, yeah, by, by um, using complicating, right? By fixing the first stage variables. You will see, we call it Bender's decomposition. For this specific uh, problem, we will also call it L-shaped decomposition. You will see it later. Good, but how are you thinking, can you think also any other option based on complicating constraint? Do we have any other option? based on uh, relaxing a constraint, not fixing a variable. Mauricio says the last one. I think if we relax the second one, we would have two separate sub problems. This one, if you relax this one? Second one. Oh, sorry. Second constraint? But this no, no, is no, no, fully no. real time uh, constraint. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So Mauricio, do you have any idea? I, I'm just guessing that uh, because uh, we have that uh, kind of a balance with all the variables, like just relaxing that last constraint can help us to solve the problem or to decompose I, it. Yes, if I relax it, it's correct, right? Then we decompose, we have one this, also we have one, yeah, for, for all, yeah. But then we are decomposing to only two sub problems, right? Or no, not two problems, sorry. We are we are decomposing. In two subsets. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. 
but but the issue is that here we don't know how many coupling constraints like this we have yeah in our stochastic market clearing problem it's it's not just power balance equality also the generators they have they have a constraints like this right pg omega real time their summation it should be between zero and pg max so it's not just power balance equality right so we don't know how many constraints like this we have it might be too many so it means that we need to relax many many constraints am i clear do you see any hidden constraint that we can relax any constraint that we can uh, make up If I make each day at first stage variable scenario dependent, what will happen? And then uh, fixing all scenario dependent first stage variables to be equal. Am I clear? Let's do together. I like to put omega index for first stage variables. Yes, Achilles, you, you got it. And then, uh, yeah, I, I put omega to all first stage variables. So now per omega, right? So what happens if I do that? Can we agree that now we have one problem per scenario? So I relax uh, the first stage variable to be scenario dependent. Very good. So Akila said now it's decomposed per scenario. Do you agree? But now I, I have a constraint saying that PG day ahead in scenario omega is equal to PG day, sorry, P day ahead G omega prime for all omega and omega prime all in the same set. So omega and omega prime, they are alias. If I do this, it's the same as the original problem, right? Do you agree? Yes. We call this constraint non-anticipativity constraint. It's also a very good candidate to be relaxed. So if I relax it, so if I relax it, then I, I, I will have one again, one, uh, one sub problem per scenario. Do you agree? That's also one option that you can use. Good. So Nico said, what did we gain from this trick? That's the second option. That's the second option to decompose a, the uh, stochastic, this uh, two stage stochastic programming. Good. So, and uh, this third exercise, think of, uh, so Nico uh, asked that we relax a constraint instead of a variable, yes. Now, instead of fixing the first stage variable, we uh, relax the non-anticipativity constraint. Again, in both options, we will have one subproblem per scenario. So to solve a two-stage stochastic program, we have two options. Both ends up in one subproblem per scenario. One is um, fixing the day ahead, the first stage variables. The second is uh, relaxing non-anticipativity constraints. Is it clear, everything? Good. So let me finish it, uh, exercise three. Uh, but I like that you think about these exercises for Monday. So Monday we will uh, deeply uh, talk about these exercises. But I, I like that you think about uh, your current problem, if you work on a specific problem right now. 
and think if it's decomposable or not. And if it is, how? So that would be amazing if uh, Monday you unmute and say, well, this is my problem. Now I, I realized it's decomposable. And this is the way, this is the number of complicating variables or constraints. And then this is uh, the number of subproblems. Good. That's it. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, is there any questions so far or about this lecture? If not, we can conclude, then I'll stop recording, but I'll stay if you have any question, I don't know, about your projects or whatever, you have some private questions, you can uh, stay and I'll be here for yeah, half an hour, then you can ask. Thank you so much. <laughs>